Julie? That's right, you're up here. Where's Julie? Oh my God, we're. Oh, 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 we're Julie. All right, call to order. The meeting of the Eagle Mountain Community Facilities District Board. Roll call, please. Chairman Schlum? Here. Board Member Contino? Here. Board Member Leger? Here. Board Member Brown? Here. Board Member Hansen? Here. Board Member Dickey? Here. And Board Member Archambault is absent. Thank you. Any uh, requests for speaking? No, Chairman. Thank you. First item, consideration of approving the Eagle Mountain Community Facility District Board meeting minutes from June 18th. Did so I get a motion? Moved. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion on the minutes. All in favor, or I'm sorry, do we do roll call here? No. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Chairman 6-0. Thanks, Henry. We can hear you. Next item, consideration resolution EMCFD 2009-03, levying upon the assessed valuation of the property within the district, subject to the ad valorem taxation, a certain sum amount, each one 100 each upon each one hundred dollars a valuation sufficient to raise the amounts estimated to be required in the annual budget specifically for the purpose of paying principal and interest upon bond indebtedness for the fiscal year ending june 30th 2010. could i get a motion so moved and a second second all in favor indicate by saying aye aye opposed chairman six zero Look for a motion to adjourn so moved second all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Now I'll call to order the um, special session of the Cottonwood Maintenance District Board. Roll call, please. Board Member Hansen? Here. Chairman Schlum? Here. Chairman Board Member Dickey? Here. Board Member Brown? Here. Board Member Leger? Here. And Board Member Contino? Here. And Board Member Archambo is uh, absent. Thank you. Any speaker cards in this item? No, Chairman. All right, look for a motion to approve the minutes of the Cottonwood Maintenance District Board meeting from June 1809. So moved. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chairman 6-0. All right, mm -hmm. next item two is consideration resolution CMD 2009-03, assessing upon the individual lots and parcels within the district a, sum, <coughs> a certain sum sufficient to raise the amount estimated to be required in the annual budget to provide funds for maintenance of certain pedestrian areas, parking, and parkways, all for the fiscal year ending the 30th day of June 2010. Can I get a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chairman 6-0. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Chairman right. six zero. Thank you. Dismissed till six thirty. We'll start our regular session. Thank you. I know. People sit on the back seat.
Yep. Whoever goes before you should just close out. And then if you just double click on that. F5. You can use the remote. situation, you know, because there are a lot of things we don't do that, you know, how we get so bad. Well, I mean, I'm a zero. Well, when you look at it, I know, but I figured out why you don't have a zero. Because we don't do nothing. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do nothing. Because if your budget increased spending anywhere, see, that's, if you look at the criteria, and, and if you look at 
most of these have to do with yeah. the actual council. Mm -hmm. So like if you even pass the budget, that you know, depending anyway, you can tip off against it. Even if the overall budget was reduced. If yeah, or if you in eight months. <laughs> this is pretty. This? Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, it looks like it came from an island or something. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. So fine. I'm trying to remember where I got it. Got it. And and usually like it's those, you know, those little people that can do those little <laughs> things. <laughs> with their good eyesight. Uh, all right, I'm going to go down for the invocation. I told, I told the girls I couldn't do it. At the end, I thought I'd turn around and ask everybody to pray. God bless America. But if there's nobody in the audience, yeah. that's not going to work. She was going because Gina lived in Germany. So she went there for a long time and then she did some other stuff by herself. But uh, yeah, I haven't really done that kind of thing. Because like one time they went,
expect them to craft somebody else to show. All right. Good evening. Call to order a regular session. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Council Member Hansen, thank you for having our invocation tonight. You say that now. <laughs> Thank you. In a couple of days, we will celebrate July 4th, the day that our founders pledged their lives, fortunes, and sacred honor for the cause of liberty and to establish the United States. In risking all to declare their independence, they formed the foundation for the democracy and freedoms we enjoy today. Wars have been fought and many lives sacrificed to preserve these freedoms and the way of life we enjoy in this, the greatest nation in the world. Let's take a moment to thank our divine presence for the gifts of independence, freedom, and liberty from tyranny, and the inspired words of our fellow citizens that continue to lead and motivate us through challenges big and small, local to global. Please contemplate Riva Beck Besson on leadership. The biggest need in politics and government today is for people of integrity and courage who will do what they believe is right and not worry about the political consequences to themselves. Elizabeth Barrett Browning on vision, light tomorrow with today. Edith Hamilton on responsibility. Responsibility is the price every man must pay for freedom. Margaret Mead on action. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Betty Southard Murphy on heritage. Democracy just doesn't happen. It didn't just happen 233 years ago and doesn't just happen now. Like our founders, we have to study about it, learn about it, teach our children about it, protect it, fight for it when necessary, nurture it, and live by the rules. And last but not least, Christi, Christy Staubus, grade six, on freedom. F is for freedom, let's hear it ring. R is for rights, a most treasured thing. E is for equality, all men the same. E is for elections, our leaders we name. D is for dream, for which our forefathers fought. O is for opportunity, our great nation has brought. M is for mankind, let us have peace and freedom among all men. God bless America. Right. Thank you, Cassie. All right, roll call, Beth. Mayor Schlum? Here. Councilmember Cantino? Here. Councilmember Dickey? Here. Vice Mayor Shambo is absent. Councilmember Hansen? Here. Councilmember Brown? Here. Councilmember Lachey? Here. All right. Welcome, everyone. I'll give a report uh, up on Valley Metro Total Transit Service that a lot of folks have interest in. And uh, that has uh, begun. Uh, the intergovernmental agreement between the Town of Fountain Hills and Valley Metro for special transportation services has been removed from the July 2nd, 09 agenda, tonight's agenda. Valley Metro Board does not have their next meeting until September of 09, and they will be approving the IGA at that time. This does not mean that the anticipated startup date has changed, which was yesterday. Um, the office has been working with Valley Metro in writing a memorandum of understanding to include services from July 1 through September 30 of 2009. The cost incurred for July, September services will be under the $20,000 amount, so it won't be necessarily coming before council on an MOU. We wanted to make sure that we made everyone aware of the change for tonight's meeting, but that that service was continuing. Anything you need to add to that, Andrew? All right, thank you. So I want to make sure that was known. Uh, we'll start tonight with the uh, public appearance and presentation first by our town clerk, Bev Bender, on a department division informational overview of services provided by the town clerk office. This will be fast. All right. <laughs> well, I just wanted to thank you for letting me come and uh, share what I do for the town of Fountain Hills. Every division has a mission statement and the town clerk's office does 
same as everyone else, but ours is to uphold the constitutional government and the laws of Fountain Hills, to record which is true and preserve what has been entrusted, to serve both internal and external customers in an impartial, confidential, efficient, and trustworthy manner. I thought you might enjoy the history of the clerks. We've been known as many things, and we've been around before the beginning of writing. We are also one of the oldest public servants along with the tax collector. And clerks are one of the handful of municipal officials that are listed in the state statutes. Areas of responsibilities include administration, legislation, records, and elections. Under administration, we track the legal request and we coordinate receipt of documents, provide notary services, respond to internal and external requests, research, and we share the licensing responsibilities with finance. We act as the town's filing agent for claims and legal documents. We work with commission support staff to ensure the town's compliance with state law. We assist with new council members' orientations, prepare meeting agendas and assembly, whoops, assemble packet materials and special assignments. Under legislation, we attend council meetings and we assist the mayor and council to facilitate their meetings prepare and review the council meeting minutes, coordinate receipt of documentation from various departments relating to the preparation of the agenda and packets, and we process legal actions taken by the council, as well as publish and post documents as they're required. Under records, we process council agenda packets and minutes for archiving purposes, maintain the town's permanent records and town seal, process and coordinate the gathering of information when we are re when public records are requested, and we also coordinate the retention and destruction of town records with the various departments according to state law. Under elections, I serve as the town's election official, coordinate election activities with Maricopa County and staff, prepare and organize election material for dis distribution to the public, serve as the town's filing agent for candidate and political committees, and we monitor the campaign finance reports that are submitted. And that's it in a nutshell. Great. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Bev, any questions for Bev on her duties? I think we're probably pretty well aware, having seen that we deal with her and see her most every day. Did you say fear? Fear her, <laughs> yes. Fear her. If, if, if you please, yes. Thank you very much, Bev. Next item is an update relating to the development of the Swaback Downtown Master Plan by our Chamber of Commerce CEO, Frank Ferrara. Welcome, Frank. Thank you, Mayor, ladies and gentlemen. I come here tonight uh, as a second teamer, I guess you might call it. Actually, Mark McDermott, as you know, who is our director for uh, the uh, Business Vitality Action Group, uh, was going to give this brief presentation, but since I'm the boss, I said, no, no, really. He, uh, he fell ill, and uh, he's unable to be here tonight, so I thought I would uh, uh, come and give us, uh, give the council and the public an update on uh, what's going on. As you know, the Downtown Visioning Master Plan project is being facilitated by the Swaback Partners and it is a collaboration between the Chamber of Commerce and the Town of Fountain Hills, for which we are extremely grateful. And as you also know, that there are five phases to this particular project. And I'm happy to report that two of the phases have been completed. For those of you that were unable to be here, and also the public, uh, we had our second uh, input, uh, public input process uh, last Tuesday, this past Tuesday, the 30th of June, right here in this room, and it's the first uh, one, the first of the of the processes that was actually taped, and it is on uh, on the town's website, and I hope to have a link on the chamber's website in the very near future. Um, phase one consisted of uh, the Swabak partners conducting what they called an analysis and reconnaissance. Um, I have a script here. I probably won't follow it because I'm not very good at following scripts. I just like to talk a lot. Anyway, uh, analysis and reconnaissance. Uh, the study uh, of the issues in the downtown. We had a starting point, and what they did at the phase one, they took everything that we had previously accomplished or done, all the old studies, all the paperwork that was accomplished by other folks. They took all that. They questioned people at walking in the streets. They looked at the downtown area. 
they got some issues that they thought were something that was to be looked at. And they come up with some type of a little plan based on all that data, and they call that their, their analysis and reconnaissance. And they looked at pedestrian circulation, land use, open space, the normal things that you would think that land use people and architectural or master planning folks would be looking at. That was phase one. Then we had public input in April. This all started back in March. <clears throat> Excuse me. This all started back in March. And then in April, we had our first public input. And that was on April the 30th. And we had that at the community center. And that was a presentation of all of the analysis and reconnaissance stuff that was put together by the SWABAC based on all of the above, all of the studies and the discussions and other things. And that was a series of drawings that were uh, very well done that really gave us, the folks that were there, an idea of just what this town, downtown area looked like. Because right now, obviously, as you look at it, it's just there. We take it for granted. We're here every day. We walk it. We see it. We drive it. But when you look at it on a map and look at it from the standpoint of areas that are there from the things that we looked at, the circulation, the land mass, and all of the other issues, um, it really took on a, a, a meaning of its own. Then we had our public input process, and the public input process was attended by about 100 people, citizens. Uh, and they gave input. They gave all of the uh, comments, the comment cards, writing, all of that. So I took all of those comments, went back to the drawing board, and included all those comments in what we call phase two. And as a result of all of the comments that went above, then phase two was put together by, uh, by the Swabat group and presented to the project team, which is the leadership of the town, it was presented to the focus group, which is a group of 25 um, folks that have uh, the, the stakeholders in the town. They represent most of the organizations within town and then also the public. And all of the all of the comments that were in phase two were put, excuse me, in phase one were uh, assimilated in phase two. And the public uh, comment on, on the 30th, I've got to say, was extremely good. It was very, very well received. It was uh, here in this room. And there I go. No, you've got <laughs> more. We just go ahead play because of your comments you made at the beginning, how you like to talk, so we thought you better <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anyway. Um, as much time as you want. Cause let's see, boy, I really get, when they, when they put the fork out, I really get nervous. I'll, I'll try to hurry it up along. And anyway, phase two, it was very well attended. The big thing about that, it was very well received. I was amazed. I expected, you know, some comments to come out that would be relatively negative, but that wasn't the case, and some of the the comments that were made were like, you know, this is the best I've ever seen. And those council people that were there uh, can understand, obviously, what I meant, and those of you that already watched it. And I would hope, I'm looking at the camera because I think I'm being on camera, but if I am, I would hope the public that wasn't there, and maybe all of you that are watching tonight, would take the time to click on and just see what went on here in this room on the 30th of June. I think you'd be very surprised. In any event, now we're into phase three, of uh, phase three, four, and five. Um, the next phase, we'll, we'll talk about all of the stuff that was gathered in phase two, plus anything else that might come up. Very good ideas about trees and other things. Um, <clears throat> and that will all be assimilated and presented in phase three, four, and five. And I'm not going to say in which order. I mean, I'm, there is going to be three, four, and five, but I don't know how much of consolidation there will be. I do know that this whole project will be completed with another series of meetings, uh, either the late August or early September. And I would urge everybody, uh, public, private, whoever, that sees the announcements on our websites, both the town and the chamber, to please be involved because this is what, this is not a Vern Swabeck or a Chamber of Commerce or a Town of Fountain Hills leadership. This is for the residents and it's got to work for the residents first and then we have something. If it doesn't work for the residents, it ain't going to work. 
and I really think that I've said enough. Um, is there any questions that anybody might want? Yes. Oh, good job. Councilmember Cantino, yeah. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to say that... Oh, uh, use your microphone uh, so everybody can hear you online. Thank you. Sorry about that. Hi, Frank. Uh, I just want to say that I think that you've done a good job. The town's good at a good job. And Swayback is really nice. And I like them because they don't push anything on you. It's up to us to accept what they have. And I think that this is going to be great. We just don't need to drop the ball this time. And by the way, you look good in pink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I wore it specially for the cameras. Seriously... Uh, Vern Swabeck, the, the, he's world renowned as we all know, but his, his mantra is, if it doesn't work for the citizens, it's not going to work for anybody. Right. Uh, we have to like uh, residents, we, not a chamber, not a U town, we the residents have to like what we put together or it's not going to work. And that's what we're keeping in mind. Thank you very much. It's easy to uh, quote Vern Swabak. Oh, my God. This is almost something that yeah, you know, people you just well sit know. there and just listen to him. And one thing that he said along the lines of what you had said is uh, the places we all like to visit are the places that already live extremely right. well. Exactly. So, hmm. Yes, uh, Council Member. Thanks. Frank, I just wanted to apologize because I, I haven't been able to come to any of them, and I was really expecting to be able to come <laughs> June 30th. You know, we were trying to get um, the right. state budget going and that ended up being an, almost an all-night thing for me. But I, I'm really glad, though. You said it's going to stream. I, I think it's going to be somewhere around the mid part of August or early September. It's very, very difficult trying to get dates that everybody can account, be accommodated. Sure. And But there will be plenty of publicity. I, I know the Times has been writing this up, you know, writing this up in the, in the newspaper. And, of course, we've been putting it on a website. So... If anybody has any questions whatsoever, I'd be glad to, anybody at all, I'd be glad to answer your questions. You just call me, Chamber of Commerce, 837-1654, my extension, private line, 229. I will not be there tomorrow because we're closed, but I'll be back to work on Monday. So if anybody has any questions, concerns, or anything at all, please uh, don't hesitate to call. I've been going to what uh, Council Member Dickey was saying. The meeting number one's presentation is on the Chamber's website. Excuse me, yes. What, number one is a PowerPoint presentation. It's not videoed, obviously, but it is on the Chamber website homepage, and it's for clearly marked April 30th. Number two currently is, on, is videoed. It's on the town's website, and I hope to have a link to, from the Chamber to the town's website so we'll cross, cross, uh, uh, we'll have a more, um, um, viewership and number three four and five of course will be as we get them so okay thank you for the update. thank you so very much is that it yep. all right thank you frank all right nick will you come forward thanks for coming here you have a microphone yep. Improvising here. all right now i see nick here nick i want to congratulate you and ask you to Give your name and your grade and tell us what you've recently been honored for in your essay. What? It's on. Yeah, just put it close to you. Oh, okay. All right. I am Nick Everett and I am a junior in Fountain Hills High School. I was recently honored by Congressman Harry Mitchell for doing a speech on the Constitution for the American Legion, which happened back around April, I believe. And, yeah, I, I got second place in state. I won the regionals, which was held, I don't remember where it was held, but I got first place in regionals, which was between, like, Flagstaff, Fountain Hills, and one other spot. And then I got into state, in which I got second place, I got $300 for winning regionals, and I got $800 for, winning, for getting second in state. And I lost to a boy who went on to nationals, and then, well, he got, he got like a, I think he did pretty well, but not, he didn't get first, so. But I'm going to try next year, and I'm already starting to practice. Today I met with a coach. He was a judge that was there, and he wants to coach me, so I met with him this morning today. And we're going to start doing it for next year, and hopefully I can get into nationals myself. Excellent. 
So it kind of goes hand in hand with, with Council Member Hansen started out with us today is um, knowledge of our history and obviously the Constitution and, and uh, there's been a couple of stories recently about how uh, the schools are not focusing enough on uh, you know, American history and all the important documents and the hard work that have been done to get us to where we are today. But you're a good example of some of that occurring and I'm certainly sorry. a standout here in Fountain Hills and, and the state as one that's taken it a step further and put it into your own words and your own essay. And I wanted to congratulate you for being recognized by the American Legion and our congressman out here. So thank you for coming tonight, Nick. Thank you very much. Nick is, uh, of course, also a member of the Mayor's Youth Council. Had to get that plug in. Uh -huh. All right, now we are to uh, call to the public. Any speaker cards, Beth? No, Mayor. Thank you very much. We'll move to the consent agenda. Request a motion to approve as listed. So moved. Okay. All right. Roll call, please. Councilmember Cantino? Aye. Councilmember Hansen? Aye. Councilmember Leger? Aye. Councilmember Dickey? Aye. Mayor Schlum? Aye. Councilmember Brown? Aye. Thank you. All right, move on to the regular agenda. First, have a public hearing to receive comments relating to the restructuring of development fees charged by the Town of Fountain Hills. We have a presentation on this. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, members of the council, I'd like to welcome Pat Walker from Red Oak Consulting, Malcolm Perney. As the council knows, this process of reviewing our impact fees began about a year ago, and this is an opportunity for the public to give input and for the council also. And um, the goal will be that the next meeting in August would be the um, adoption of the fees, with the fees being effective in November of 2009. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Mayor, members of the council, as Julie said, my name is Pat Walker with Red Oak Consulting, and I will just be giving a brief presentation. We went into great length on all the fees and the calculations back in April when the notice of intent was done, so I'm just doing a recap, but be glad to answer any questions more in depth if council or any members of the public would have it. Um, tonight, I'll be talking about the non-utility fees that were updated in the study, the recommended fee summary. Um, the development fee comparisons, there was a question on that that I'll be addressing by one of the council members uh, last time that I was here. Schedule for adoption and then questions and discussion. Um, we're really in the next step of the Arizona State requirement. Um, we had the notice of intent and 60 days after the notice of intent, you can then have a public hearing. After the public hearing, you have to wait 30 days to have the adoption of the fees and then after that, it's another 75 days before they become effective. The um, non-utility development fees that we updated for residential was the open space, parks and recreation, library and museum, and re residential and non-residential, which include commercial, is the general government, law enforcement, streets, fire and emergency. Um, the first schedule here is the single family residence per dwelling unit. As you can see, the largest increase in all the categories was streets. This is because there was a traffic study that was done, and we actually had good data to use in the update of the um, infrastructure improvement plan and the capital plan, and that was included in that. Um, the next is the multifamily residential fee. Again, the largest increase is in the streets category, as well as in the, um, the commercial per square foot. And, and again, you would expect to see this depending on the traffic of the type of uh, uh, business that it is. It you know, um, would be higher fee than if it was a lower traffic count. And again, we have the industrial per square foot. Now, last time I was here, um, a council member asked, out of all these cities that we compared against, uh, which ones are going to be updating them in the near future? Uh, we called each one of the, the um, towns or cities. Queen Creek um, is, updates them on an annual basis, so they will continue to do that. Uh, Mesa has a study underway um, that they're updating their fees, so what's up there today is going to change as well as Queen, Queen Creek. Uh, Carefree is going to be updating their fees in 2010. Um, and the others said that they weren't at this point in time. Uh, they just finished updating them, so um, they may do some indexing, but not a full study. So that's the information that we had. As I mentioned um, in the beginning, the fee and IP adoption is scheduled for August 6, 2009. 
you, um, council does need to adopt both because it is a requirement of statute to adopt the IIP along with the, with the uh, fee ordinance. And then the effective date of the fees is scheduled for November 1st, 2009. So for summary and recommendations, again, no actions required tonight. We would just um, want council to consider these proposed fees for adoption at the August 6th meeting. Uh, we would also propose that you increase the fees annually based on a 20 city engineering news record construction cost index. Um, you can do that according to the statutes. You want to evaluate your capital plans on an annual basis. That should be an ongoing thing. And then if there's any major changes in the community development statistics, economic trends, adjust fees accordingly, you may have to do a study at that point. Otherwise, you may just want to look at an index until that point comes. And with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Good. Thank you for your presentation. Mm -hmm. Quick one. Nice. Questions? Councilmember Dickey. Mayor, thank you. Um, kind of a million dollar question with all the talk that's been going on. At the state level, um, right now everything is off the table. Um, if something, it, I guess the league, I guess maybe that would be a question for you or who's watching out because um, if we get a date, I wonder what, what that is going to do with everything as far as any kind of moratorium or a freezing or anything like that. Right now it's all off, but, you know, in case it comes back off. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilwoman Dickey, I'll try and tackle that very broad question summed up in one little piece there. We have, we had three different things that we were really concerned about. One was uh, an, a statute change that reluctantly cities and towns were uh, willing to accept as the only thing that was going to happen. That bill was moving forward through the process until everything came to a screeching halt um, months ago. Uh, that bill was not adopted, so it is, in effect, dead for the moment. Uh, the second part of that was a moratorium on fee increases, which would have affected this directly because the date was going to be July 1, so that any fees that would have been implemented would have had to have a, a delayed effective date to be on that moratorium period. And a third one, and that was actually part of the budget that was adopted, but then vetoed by the governor. The third part of it was a moratorium on all fees collected, which didn't make it into anything, thankfully, and, and uh, was not adopted. And that would have caused us to not even be able to collect the fees that are adopted as of today. So the special session that's been called is for the purpose of fixing the budget and these items, while they were living in the budget, are not budgetary items. They really didn't belong there in the first place. Um, so there's going to be great resistance by cities and towns to allowing that discussion to happen during the budget special session. Um, and barring them being resurrected during that special session, they are, in effect, done for this year unless another special session is called and uh, you know, hastily run through. Um, the effective date on the the step-up procedure that was contemplated by the initial House bill was that after the first of next year, there would be a period of time after an approval for which a newly adopted fee couldn't be applied. Uh, so it wasn't really a moratorium. It was more of a grandfathering provision that allowed for a grace period for someone to know with certainty what their fees were without the fear of any kind of an increase. And it was a, a bit convoluted the way that it was defined to get there, but it did provide a little bit of certainty in terms of that particular aspect, but that is no longer alive as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our questions, Councilmember Contino. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I wonder if you could help me understand uh, some of the figures we have back on law enforcement, back in the uh, single dwellings and the uh, family dwellings. Uh, drop from 412 to 112. Um, again, the, the methodology that was used on this, are you talking about the fee itself on that schedule? Yes. Um, right. It, again, it was the fact that of the number of projects that was included in there and completion of projects when we update them. So therefore, the fee would change depending on, on what is put into the fee and what's been completed. So. so we're not talking about any types of changes or anything or the lower level of service or anything like that where the cost is just going to go down? The um, level of service will not go down as okay. a result of the fee going down. But I mean, the cost is going to go down? The cost for the fee will go down, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So that won't affect anything? 
and in the law enforcement. Whenever a fee goes down, it means that, that there's not the expenses there that you need to make, so it won't affect your level of service. It's just that the calculation of the fee, you're not required to have the, the fee on new homes so, or commercial development, so it went down, but it will not affect the service for, for law enforcement. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Would you, do you want to dive into that a little bit more? Is, uh, on the, the, it's one of the few areas that went down or suggested to go down, and the change is law enforcement. The other one is open space, but law enforcement specifically, is that because there's not a tremendous amount of new residents here or new housing here, or why would that be affected in such a way? I know the cost of law enforcement hasn't gone up dramatically, hasn't gone down at all, but uh, why would that figure change in um, the only reason that it would, it was the same methodology, the hybrid, what we call the hybrid, where you look at using existing population and new population into the calculation. The only reason it would go down is because of projects being completed um, that shouldn't be included in the fee calculation. So what I can do is send the council before the adoption what the projects were last time in the fee study, what they are now, and when the things, you know, evolve and they're completed, they're not into the fee calculation. Okay. I know it's one of the smaller pieces of the overall fee, it's 1% on some of the, the areas, um, but it is interesting. But bigger question is on the streets since that makes up more than probably 70% of the increase on each and every one of the applications here. Mm -hmm. um, would those be impacted if, in fact, we uh, were financing uh, street improvements or street construction uh, through means that we're going to consider tonight? Uh, one of which is a bond. Um, if a bond were passed, would that reduce the fee on uh, in the development fees, or would that uh, just be a netting of fees back to the town from a developer who is causing the impact? Well, it depends again on, on the type of bonds that are used and who's paying them. But usually, if it's a growth-related project and it's paid by bonds, then we would have to give a credit against the impact fee calculation. So anything that's used for new to de development, I don't know what bonds you're specifically, Julie probably could answer that, but they're not for growth related projects, is that? Uh, Mayor, members of the council, um, yes, the proposal that we would consider um, later this evening is for Saguaro Boulevard, and it's actually a mill and overlay, which is a maintenance project not related to growth. So if the bonds are approved, it does not affect the calculation of the development fees, because those projects, the development fees pay for only projects that are related to growth. Okay, that makes sense. Then can, you, can we under, better understand why the change is so significant in that area of streets? Again, it was the result of the traffic study that was completed and the number of lane miles that were going to have to be uh, made to accommodate growth and what portion of it that was um, directly impacted by growth. That's when we use the vehicle miles traveled, the vehicle trip ins and the calculations based on your general plan, what you're going to build out for commercial, what you're going to build out for residential. But the bottom line is, is that your overall street costs have gone up um, because again they were identified and they weren't identified before. Is it, is it not uncommon to have um, single family residential fees and also the commercial fees be recommended at nearly double what they are today? Uh, Mayor, members of the council, if that's what it costs to maintain your service level in your community, no. It means maybe they were understated before and you weren't really having the funds that you needed in order to build the streets. So it's not unusual for people to do a traffic study or water sewer master plan study and come back and say, okay, now we really know what these true costs are for the future, so therefore um, the fees need to go up. And otherwise what happens is you're not maintaining your level of service that you um, have been providing to your citizens in the future. Can you take it all the way back to the beginning? And, and if you can't, maybe ask someone else to define what development fees are, are in place for. What, what is the purpose of development fees? I can define that. Um, the purpose of the development fees, again, is to be able to uh, provide the funds for new growth and capital facilities and infrastructure so that you don't place the burden on existing residents as a result of go growth. If you don't grow at all, you wouldn't need to build more and you wouldn't need to have impact fees. You would have maintenance things, you would have replacements, but you wouldn't have the need for impact fees. So again, it is to be able to continue with the level of service that your citizens have become accustomed to, the existing citizens, and be able to provide the infrastructure, the facilities, and be able to pay for it from impact fees. And 
does Red Oak Red Oak does quite a bit of work in this area. Do you help other communities with this in the valley? Mayor, members of council, absolutely. I I can sit here and name a bunch of cities that we work with that are just about every city in the valley we've worked it with at one point or another. Okay. And in the state and across the country. And the uh, quant quantification or quantifying impact fees, there's a particular model you follow that's widely accepted or can you speak to that? Mayor and members of the council, absolutely. Um, we have to have impact fees that, and a calculation of impact fees that we can defend in court. Not only do we have to follow the state statute of every state that we work with, which is different from state to state, we also have to have the methodology that we can defend. Uh, is there a rational nexus in there? Is it a necessary public service? And we do use a model. That's why we, we described the methodologies that we used last time, because we, um, we, we are the ones that would have to go forward and defend them if they were challenged. And we have um, never lost a defense on that. So. Okay. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. so our next step would be um, Councilmember Hanson question. Thank you, Mayor. Just a little bit more on the streets, if we can kind of zero in. If it's if we know, but from what Julie said, that it's not used for like maintenance and repair, then since there is such a significant increase, are we, would this be primarily based on the traffic study, like Fountain Hills Boulevard, as the main street going into the former state land? I mean, I'm just wondering what areas we're looking at. What uh -huh. caused such a jump, I think, is that's kind of where I was going. It is a big jump. Are there different costs associated? Did we decide or find that a trip, yeah, it should be quantified at a higher and figure? And the other streets other than Fountain Hills Boulevard? Because yeah. if they're within the project, that's going to be picked up by the developer anyway. And I think we didn't recall a while back we looked at some traffic numbers and we looked at increases calculated based on development of the state trust land. It looked like it went across Palisades and Fountain Hills Boulevard and Swaro not evenly, but Palisades seemed to pick up quite a bit, but it's been quite some time and I, I wonder if that's what it was, what some of those figures were from. Yeah. Um, I have in front of me the list that was included in the study that we, we gave out to council and we have about six pages of projects here that are going to be going forward and we look at the par portion of each and every project on a percentage of growth and non-growth and then we use our calculation based on vehicle miles, travel, vehicle tri um, trip in. When you're looking at some of the projects, there's everything from traffic signals to some of the larger ones. I see Fountain Hills Boulevard uh, sidewalk is one of them. Um, Let's see, the, um, trying to look at some of these others, a lot of traffic signals here. Um, what we really want. Shea to Boulevard bike lane, I mean there's a whole list of projects here that I could, I could go on and read, but these are, it's mainly because of that Swirl Boulevard mill and overlay, 4.5 million in 2009-10. So, um, you know, in total you're looking at, 2009 through 2028, you're looking at about um, $31 million, $31.3 million in street projects. Some of, those, so, some of those projects might be might be more of a maintenance project, and so those some of those may not, perhaps should not be in there. Is that possible? That one that you mentioned on Saguaro is potentially be qualified more as a maintenance project, but. I'm not sure how those are actually defined or, or... Well, there's different ones that are there. The Sawara um, uh, Boulevard Service Road Elimination is non-growth. If you look at Sawara Monterey right turn improvements, that's growth. There's different portions of Sawara Boulevard. And if you look at the total amount of street capital, it's about $115 million hmm. that's to build out. And out of that $115, 84.2 is non-growth and 31.2 is growth. So obviously those are huge numbers. Over what timeline are these calculated out? They're to what we uh, consider build out, which is 2028. Okay. okay. So 20 years or roughly. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Dickey. Mayor, and again, um, what is also being reflected is if they were too low before. Mm -hmm. So it's not just here's the projects, here's the percentage of the projects that are related to growth, but also what have you been collecting up until now. Right. right. Thank you. Is that where you were going, Councilman Hanson? Yeah, Hanson. and just one more thing, yeah. and this is kind of a Tom question with the traffic studies. Would this at all be linked to the report that we had from Stantec 
Would some of that information be? I was not involved um, in the study, but I would imagine that it was used as a tool to look at where we were. If you if you saw the maintenance reports, you know we saw numbers of up to 13 million for different things. Um, I know that in the 25-year uh, CIP, we have different miscellaneous projects that um, would be related to growth and streets. So um, I again, I, I don't know for sure, but I, I would think that it could be a tool for that purpose. I was wondering if it might be linked to our all those red splotches on that map. I, I couldn't tell you. Okay. Thank you. I think it's. Uh, with the with what we have here tonight, obviously the the bigger increase, I'm going to take another look at that study again here and, and get re familiar with that because it's a, that would be a big increase in particular. I know um, you know we want development to pay for itself. That that's without question, and and the folks that have been here uh, paid their paid their development fee, and and uh, they don't need the additional burden of paying for someone else where uh, they paid already for themselves, but. Um, I'm not sure what uh, degree uh, or impact we want to have on uh, you know, commercial is important to Fountain Hills and our economic development base is important and, and those are jumping up uh, even more dramatically uh, three times and some and the commercial per square foot calculation on the recommendation. So I wanted to make sure that we aren't costing ourselves out of a market or if we, if we our goal is to, you know, grow that area and have a nice economic base that we aren't hurting ourselves there, um, but still obviously make up for the paper uh, improvements that are needed to maintain that quality of life you mentioned. Anybody else? We have someone from the public on this item. Mayor Ed Key. Welcome. Nice to see you, Ed. Good evening, Mayor Schlum and members of the council. My name is Ed Key and I reside on Agonole and Fountain Hills. I'm here to uh, urge the council on August 2nd to approve intact the recommendations of the consultant on the adjustment of the uh, development fees. You know, uh, development, particularly residential development, never pays for itself. Development increases demands for town services and town capital expenses. And I think that the development fees thereby, the, the rationale is to help the community pay for the expenses necessary as a result of uh, development. The <clears throat> there will always be those who will come to you and say, well, if you approve the increase in the development fees, uh, you're going to harm the uh, construction industry. Now, I'm sure the construction industry wants to pay its fair share. It's a question of what is the fair share. And I believe that we have before us tonight, uh, with the increase, what would be a fair share. I do not accept the argument that it's going to economically impact uh, that is the increase in fees is going to economically impact the building industry and us the town. Uh, we have uh, a public statement from the Almond companies that the homes they're going to be building in uh, the state trust land will range from 6 675000 to $1.5 million. And I believe in some cases already in, in uh, Eagle's Nest, and uh, looking a little bit in the future in Adaro Canyon, the land alone exceeds those numbers. So I think that uh, a person who is willing to pay that kind of money for a home in Fountain Hills uh, is not going to hesitate at all if we increase those development fees uh, $4,900. And I urge you, I implore you, uh, to look positively upon this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else on this item? No, Mayor. All right. Council Member Contino. Yes, I'm going to go back to law enforcement because we talked about this once before and I had suggested we bring in another squad because with all the activities going on and with our growth, we just don't have enough service to get everybody that we want to get to. 
And I'm still kind of concerned about this low, low figure that we have here. And it kind of bothers me. I don't want our services to go down, but we're going to get more people and we're going to have more things happen as we do right now. And sometimes we don't have enough deputies to take care of all the calls that are coming in now. And that bothers me. Appreciate it. Um, Mayor, uh, Council Member, um, I just wanted to point out that with impact fees that you cannot use them for operation and maintenance costs. The only thing you can use impact fees for is for capital facilities and infrastructure uh, equipment and those sorts of things. You can't use it to um, add any police personnel or things like that. That would have to be done through your regular budgetary process with general fund uh, dollars and be considered at budget time. Yes, I understand. And I, uh, I'm just saying that, I guess my next question is, why is it sitting in there if, we do, if it doesn't affect us? What's that, Councilmember Contino? Uh, why is there a figure in there at all? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? There are some capital there, there growth is some capital. projects that are associated with law enforcement that are calculated in here, is there? Yes, there is. Okay. Yes. So there are some growth projects um, or invest, you know, expenditures so does, expected over the next 20 years. law enforcement once a little bit? Well, it's the calculations, from what I understand, that go into um, uh, impact fees or the non-operational expenditures, any item that can be calculated into or applied towards growth that impact law enforcement are calculated in that fee and then spread out over the number of, you know, homes that are expected and then calculated in a impact fee. Um, maybe there's a better way to explain it. But. Um, no, Mayor, you're correct. And the two projects that we have in here is a police facility construction expansion and a police facility vehicles and equipment that we've included in here. So, um, again, those are pretty far out. In 2021, 37.8% uh, is growth related, 2021 too. And um, so they're out there and pretty far out when growth is there. But that's, that's why the fee, that's all that there is in the uh, impact fee study. So that's why the fee went down. The other projects aren't, okay. aren't there that were there before. And imagine since we are contract with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office that um, inherent in their fee towards their contract fee includes the cost that they need to recapture to cover most of their capital items or vehicles and, and those types of things. Except that I think it's going to go up next year pretty good. I, I think, think we got that in the figure. We do uh, recalculate these every two years. Is that what we do and perhaps index once a year? Every two, three years? I can't recall how often. Um, Mayor, members of the council, we the statutes allow us to index the impact fees on an annual basis without having to go through this process of creating a capital improvement plan or an IAP. Um, our ordinance on the development fees requires that they be reviewed every five years. That's right. We could do it sooner, but at least every five years. Correct. Okay. And Council Mayor Contino, if there are some items you think maybe they need to calculate, probably just let staff know heads up on some of the, the items that might apply to this, if you think if you think of them. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments, anyone else from the public? No, Mayor. All right. I'll close the public hearing. Thank you very much. Open the next public hearing to receive comments on special use permit for an expanded open seating area in the CC zoning district, also known as El Encanto, located at 11044 North Saguaro Boulevard, Plat 202, Block 2, Lot 6A, Case SU 2009-04. One more time. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for presenting tonight. Thank you, Mayor. This item is to receive comments on and consider a request to expand the open outdoor seating for a new restaurant, case number SU 2009-04. The property is located at 11044 North Sawyer Boulevard, Plat 202 Block 2, Lot 6A. The property is the site where other restaurants have existed in the past. Most recently, Phil's Filling Station, and uh, the current building permit work that has been going on for some time is, was to create another restaurant, the Two-Step Cafe, which will not be opening. The new restaurant will be a Mexican restaurant named El Encanto, and is modeled after two existing El Encanto Mexican restaurants in the valley. Outdoor seating areas in commercial zone properties require special use permits. Changes to existing outdoor seating areas, and as you're probably all familiar, 
it already has outdoor seating, uh, <clears throat> also requires a new special use permit. The site zoned common commercial CC and the adjacent lots are also CC and in front of the site is a shared parking, Plat 202 parking and there's also parking across the street. To the west is an alley as well as to the north and beyond the alley to the west are apartments and condos zoned R3. To the north beyond the alley is a wash and this is zoned R3 and to the east across the Wild Boulevard is single family residential R18 RUPD. There are homes across the wash though, right? There are single family, that's R18 I believe. These views at the bottom of the property are the front and rear. The planned expansion area is to the left of the existing structure as you look toward the entrance. So that would be in this area right here. Above are site plans depicting the existing layout of the restaurant and the current outdoor seating areas and the planned expansion extension. Note there are actually uh, two outdoor areas, one that's just slightly west of the restaurant and the second is uh, the porch area that you know of today and then here's the other outdoor eating area as it is today. This slide shows the four elevations of the site. The front is distinguished with multiple arches accented with stone. The side has an arch as well along with multiple full arches. The rear facing the residential area will have a high wall without customer access except for an emergency exit of course. And also on the slide is the proposed floor plan that includes a pond, a bridge, and a ramada inside the expanded outdoor seating area. Note that the existing entry porch seating area is gone in the proposed plan. That area will be a bar inside the restaurant. CC zoning includes shared parking and zero setbacks. 100% coverage is allowed. As CC zoning is adjacent to residential zoning, it is intended to be to integrate limited commercial activity and professional offices. The total additional square footage is 3,566 square feet with 680 square feet for the diners. Lot coverage is 91% and the maximum height of the building is 21 feet. The rear exterior wall proposed is 15 feet high. Along with the alley, the wall provides a buffer for the multifamily units to the west of the restaurant. Outdoor security lighting will be fully shielded and no music or entertainment is allowed outside in CC zoning. Planning and Zoning Commission on June 11th forwarded a recommendation to the Town Council to approve the special use permit with stipulations. Staff supports that recommendation. And the suggested motion is that you move that the Town Council approve the proposed special use permit for an expanded open seating area in CC Zoning District located at 11044 North Suara Boulevard, Plat 202, Block 2, Lot 6A, subject to the stipulations outlined in the staff report, case number SU 2009-04. That uh, concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer questions. The applicant's also in the audience as well, and will answer questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jean, the, um, any uh, questions for staff on the presentation? Councilmember Hansen. Thank you, Mayor. Jean, um, in the document provided by the architect, it refers to uh, the expansion area includes a partial second floor dining area. I didn't see that on the plan anywhere. I just wondered where that might be located. Yeah, Mayor, uh, Councilmember Hansen, um, the first submittal uh, that they provided was to have a second floor. And um, as they went through this to the second iteration after we had comments, they decided uh, to remove the second floor level. So uh, the original submittal had it. Yeah. Okay. Well, they may come back to that someday, but. I think um, many of us have uh, heard quite a bit about Alan Canto and uh, are excited to have them come to our community. We're known for some great uh, Mexican food here in Fountain Hills and this will be a, another unique place to 
enjoy it, and I know uh, they bring some uniqueness to us uh, from other locations that they've had great success also. Um, this um, is a significant improvement in that area to that property, and in fact, um, it looks like they're almost doubling the space that was used by uh, Phil's filling station initially, um, and it looks like a unique design on the ex on, for the uh, largely outside um, dining area. Um, I was pleased to see the the wall in the back because that's the one area I was sensitive to was the residences across the wash that seemed to uh, be if there were impact that's that's what would be impacted. There has been outdoor dining in that area before with other restaurants and I don't know if there's there had been much of an issue uh, even without that type of a wall but um, I'm excited to see it come forward. Um, is there anyone from the public on this item? No mayor. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much, Jean. Thank you. And close the public hearing. Move on to the next item as a consideration regarding the special use permit for El Encanto as just presented. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All right. Second. Anyone from the public? No, Mayor. All right. Any discussion or questions? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mayor 6 0. Thank you very much. When is the proposed opening? And when is it opening? <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's actually they're they're actually uh, uh, working on the insides today for the existing portion with the porch being included, and you know the plans are here. So pretty soon, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, next month or two. All right. Wish you great success. Look forward to it. All right. Next item consider. All right. Next item consideration of concept plan for the Fountain Hills Fire Station Number Two located at 15,200 East Shea Boulevard within the Shea Boulevard right away. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. This is an application for a concept plan for the proposed new fire station number two located on Shea Boulevard. This is a joint application by Rural Metro and the town. Fire station will be located at 15200 East Shea Boulevard. The building is entirely within the Shea Boulevard right-of-way. It is just east of Palisades Boulevard. This is Shea. <coughs> this is the proposed site plan. The building will have 6,735 foot square foot building footprint on two and a half acres. The building itself is 5,974 square feet under roof with 761 square feet of patio areas. The site plan shows the building here. This is one patio area. This is the patio, front patio entrance area. On the site plan as well, you'll see this is the driveway, the parking area, parking for 10 vehicles. There's one handicapped space. There are an additional two motorcycle spaces over here, and there will be a bicycle rack probably somewhere near the main entrance area. Uh, the trash Receptacle is located in the far corner. There are a number of retaining walls on the site, which will be gabions, uh, stone. There's a sidewalk to be on Main or on uh, Shea Boulevard, connecting to the front entrance area. The driveway will come down. The large bay area here for the vehicle. There's a smaller bay area here. Uh, as part of the improvements, there will be a median cut in Shea Boulevard, and there will be two deceleration lanes for safe turning and also allowing the trucks in and out. This is a color version. It shows it a little bit better. Again, the building, parking areas, the, the bays, sidewalks are here. These are your decel lanes and your median cut. Property will be fully landscaped and revegetated with low water plants after it's developed. And the building is being designed to lead silver uh, certification standards for energy efficiency. These are the four elevations. In this top elevation, this is where Shea Boulevard is. So this is as if you are looking from Palisades at the building. The one below that, this is where Shea Boulevard is, and you are looking towards Scottsdale. And then this next one, you are as, this view is as if you are standing in Shea Boulevard looking at the building. And this one is, and if you're behind the building looking towards Shea Boulevard, the building would be on the other side of the building, or the Shea Boulevard would be on the other side of the building. 
Staff recommends approval of the concept plan subject to the stipulations outlined in the staff report. That concludes my presentation. I can answer questions. The applicants, uh, Rural Metro, and as well as their design team are also in the audience. Thank you, Bob. Would you go back to the view from, Sewer, from Shea Boulevard? Which one is that again? As if you are standing in Shea Boulevard. Is that considered the west? No, that's not the west. The south elevation. Oh, I see. I assumed we were looking at the garages, but we're not. You're looking at the garages in the top one. But uh, this, again, would be Shea Boulevard over here. So if you're going down Shea, okay. they're not as visible as they would appear there. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anyone from the public on this item? No, Mayor. All right. The, um, we were out there today walking a little bit and um, talked with the chief. And um, it, in looking at these elevations, it certainly is kind of residential style. Um, Certainly, uh, looking at the west elevation, it, it really looks like a house with two big RV garages on it. Uh, but uh, so I think the style is is one if we get the funding uh, that would fit well in that area and uh, not be a large commercial building. Certainly not a big building to begin with. But thank you for that overview. And if you would explain why are we seeing a concept plan here? I'm assuming it's because we want to be best positioned for the uh, funding request. That's one of the main considerations is that the, there is a deadline for the grant application and there was no Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. However, it's coming to Council also because the Planning and Zoning Commission can't authorize the use of town land or the town funds. Uh, that would come to Council anyway. And Council is the most prepared to deal with this issue because you've been talking about the funding mechanisms over the last few months. And that's why it's coming to Council. Thank you very much. Any questions for staff on the concept plan? Councilmember Hanson. Thank you, Mayor. I think the elevations look nice from all directions. I had a little bit of concern with the north elevation. Uh, it's a, it just appears a little bit more stark. On the other elevations, there's those lines, the awnings over the windows and the doors that have kind of that slant effect to them, that they kind of cut the plane. But when you look at the north elevation, it's, it's, very, it's a lot more boxy, and you don't have those, those slanted like overhangs or something to kind of soften that. And I was just wondering if anything could be done with that top piece on the roof that is just so flat and square. If it could somehow be angled out at the ends to kind of mirror the other elevations that have some slanting that goes kind of breaks up the mass. If you don't mind, I'll let the architect answer yeah, that one. Thank you. Well, that's what the resort would be looking at, and that's what Westridge will be looking at. So I'm good. Welcome. Thanks for coming up. You understand the piece there that Councilman Rance is speaking to. The the long piece is their way to. In my very unscientific terms, yeah. you know that <laughs> box thing. Down. You know, <laughs> uh, Mayor, Council Members, I, I do understand the question. It, it would be fairly easy to incorporate some. Uh, slope roofs uh, on the north elevation to mimic some of the other elevations to make it look more residential and scale down the building. It would be fairly easy to accomplish. Just so we're clear, I think I'm looking at the south elevation um, in particular just for this an example. Right With that one there, I'm going to do dueling right. pointers. Wait, but this where did I go? <laughs> <laughs> right there. Yes, that one. And then it's yeah. the other side of the buildings here. But this area here where it has the angled Get away, Jay. roof area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I think that's what Councilmember Hansen said would like to see more of is this angle, sure. right? And then I didn't know if the fenestration on that side could, those windows are pretty small. If they could just maybe be a, a little, and I know that's where the, where the big, the truck will be. So it's the, you know, that thing where the trucks sit. So I, thank you. That's okay. So I thought that might soften that mass a little bit, too, before the trees grow. Good. I think that's it. And being aware of what we don't even have there yet, the, the uh, potential resort property and what they'll be looking at is certainly important to keep in mind. So that is something that might be possible to illustrate a change in the future? Correct. Okay. All right, good. Any other questions? All right, we already talked to the public. Anything else, Bob? I just wanted to mention, uh, you mentioned on the windows on that side, 
I think one of the reasons why they are so small is because there was some concern from Westridge that they would see the lights uh, shining through those windows across that, that large area. So there may be some mm. shading that ne necessary if the, the windows get bigger. Okay. Thanks. So if the lights are on at night. Right. Yeah. That may, okay. Good. Glad you're thinking of all those things and taking the input of the residents around there. All right. No. Yes, no. Councilmember Dickey. Move to approve the concept site plan for Fountain Hills Fire Station 2 subject to the stipulations outlined in the staff report. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mayor 6-0. Thank you. Item 9, consideration of resolution 2009-24, ordering and calling a special bond election to be held in and for the town of Fountain Hills, Arizona on November 3, 2009 to, to submit to the qualified electors thereof the question of authorizing the issuance and sale of $4,500,000 in principal amount of general obligation and or street and highway user Revenue bonds project of 2009 and declaring an emergency. Can we have a presentation? Um, no, Mayor. At the last council meeting, we staff presented to the um, to the council an option to pay for Saguaro Boulevard through um, general obligation bonds or highway user revenue bonds or any combination. Um, the, this consideration resolution this evening is to. Um, authorize the council to put to the electorate if they want to approve those bonds. All right. So our options were at the time 4.5 4 million in general obligation. The other option was mixing general obligation and HERF, correct? Mayor, that's correct. So those are the two th things that we council asked you to bring back for us to determine whether and which ones to go forward with. All right. So discussion from council on the item of bringing forward $4.5 million bond election in November. Councilmember Hanson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I have a question, and it's probably an Andrew question. Um, in reading the ballot language, it's very broad. It, um, you know, to design, acquire, install, construct, and reconstruct street highways of or within the town. Fountain Hills Boulevard, uh, Fountain Hills Boulevard, oh. Suara Boulevard is not mentioned in the ballot language, and I thought, wondered if there was a reason that that could not be specifically mentioned since that's what all the talk has been about. Mr. Mayor, Council Member, we, we could certainly tailor the, the ballot language to specifically reference Saguaro. I, I believe that ballot language is usually more flexible just in case the project budget is somehow miraculously less than what the amount authorized is or the amount issued is, that that money can then be used in whatever small portion to complete other projects as necessary is typically the reason why it's so broad. But the main bulk of this is, of course, for Saguaro. And if some limiting language is requested, we can certainly do that as well. But would we have the option then, if Saguaro did cost less, that we just stop and not spend any more of the, you know, I don't know. Absolutely. Typically, the, the bonds are issued for a contract amount that we know we're going to pay. Uh, sometimes we get lucky and the contracts come in less than what we've, we've gone out and issued. Uh, it's rare, but in the recent years, we've been doing a little better. Recent months, we've been doing better on our costs than we have been previously. So there's an opportunity for that. But if the language is limited to Saguaro, it'll be spent on Saguaro. And if there are cost savings, we'll have to figure out how to address that then. Good, thank you. Good question. Anyone else on council question this about uh, uh, Councilmember Dickey? Was your hand going up? Not so. I, Mayor, I, I wanted to ask again about the um, the approximate uh, amount that it might be to a uh, home based on the three hundred fifty thousand dollar home and um, thirty one dollars a year. And I know that you don't want to be nailed down to that, but what what is a possible um, scenario of a difference in that amount? Do you have any um, any further ideas on that, um, Mayor? Members of the council, that's um, an estimate in the the um, how much it could differ. The variance of it, I can't imagine, would be more than five dollars or ten dollars. Again, it's based on you know the inf the interest rate of the bonds. It's it's an estimate of how much what the annual payment is. 
So in, we pay an annual payment of about $400,000, and based on the assessed valuation of the community, it, it, it's about $31, $35 per year. Okay, fair. Um, well, uh, as we spoke about this before, I was obviously indicating um, that I would support putting this in front of the, of the voters, and I, and I still do uh, support doing that. So I think we had decided that we were down to those two options, correct? The, the either having part of it be her funds and part of it uh, be all of the, of the bond. And, and as I said, Ben, I'm comfortable with either one, but I'm very comfortable with going ahead with these, um, uh, with the 4.5. I think we're, we're, what we're seeing, obviously, is uh, um, our, a lot of our roads having some issues as far as maintenance. And I, I would rather keep the HERF money as we have it so that we can use that for other needs should that happen. I mean, if, if something happens and we don't use it all and there, there is a mechanism to, to stop collecting, that would, that, that would be something obviously we'd all be in favor of, or at least I'd be in favor of. But um, again, um, maybe I, I, I drive back and forth on Suara Boulevard twice a day, every single day. Uh, I've been doing it for years. I've lived here for 25 years and just I, I philosophy or however you want to say it, I think it's a logical way to help maintain the roads that I certainly use. And even if I wasn't on that particular stretch of road every day, I, I care about the safety of it. I care about the way it looks. I think it affects our town um, as a whole. And it's really not looking very good. Like I said, I do go on there every single day. And the patching and, and every, uh, we've done our best, but I, I really believe that it's time to take responsibility and, uh, and fix those roads. And I think this is a logical way. And if that indeed is what we can expect in a per year, it's, it's, it's a project. It's not forever. And, I'm, and I would be comfortable with going ahead with the whole amount. Thank you. And it is a 15 year, isn't it? 15 Mayor, years. That's correct. That's Member Hanson. Thank you, Mayor. A lot of things have changed just since our last meeting. Um, the, you know, we've had the cap and trade vote, the sales tax increase possibility, joining the, the school bond uh, override going on the November ballot, and the continued downward spiraling of the many other economic conditions that Bob Deppie cited so well in his letter to the editor. They're, they're very compelling, as were Councilman Leger's comments at the last meeting. Uh, a year ago, I would have felt very, very comfortable um, letting our citizens decide about Swaro, but right now I'm not even comfortable. I'm not comfortable putting them in that position to have to decide right now with all the other pressures that they're experiencing right now. Um, since the last meeting, we've talked to a number of folks and, and asked them what they think about the, the bond for Swaro, and surprisingly, a number of people say, "Well, what's so really bad about Swaro? You know, can we just kind of patch it for a while? Can we put it off? What's the hurry?" Um, Fountain Hills Boulevard should be done first. They were kind of all over the place. But the type of responses didn't lend a lot of, you know, you kind of got an idea how they might be voting when they went to the, to the ballot box. Um, adding to that, the careful planning and coordination that's going to have to take place between the Suaro improvements, uh, the possible future downtown circulation improvements associated with the Zwaback visioning process, and the potential future impact to Suaro with regards to sanitary service expansion for the Elman development, it just seems like maybe this is a little premature and maybe one more year might be a, a, a good idea. Um, it, it bothers me when I think of spending a lot of money to improve a street only to have to tear it up for one or other purposes, you know, a couple years down the line. So. Um, I'm just, at this point, I'm just, I'm very hesitant and I probably would not vote to go forward with this right now. Thank you. Councilmember Brown. Uh, I take a little different view of this. I think that um, we have, we have the staff and we have a, an outside firm that has given us pretty clear, clear directions about the life of uh, Saguaro and, and what Saguaro can end up to be. And I feel like that if, if we, if the council were to say no to putting it on the um, November 3rd ballot, we would be taking the vote away from the people 
and I don't think it should be the council's uh, place to take that vote away. There are as many people that I've talked to that are clearly seeing the saguaro deteriorate, and if we did have and we could have an extremely wet uh, monsoon season, there are sections of the road that would just literally disappear. I mean, we would have potholes that we could lose some of the new small little green vehicles in. And um, thank you. You're welcome. But uh, I I I feel that as far as the Elman conversation, that might not happen with with the state of the economy. That might not happen for only God knows when. Five six years might be a realistic figure and so I don't think we can we can actually use the Elman uh, wear and tear and the Elman the movement of the sewer remain down saguaro I don't think we can put this into the equation I think that we need to let the public I think the, the people of Fountain Hills needs to be able to uh, give the council uh, clear directions and on the same on, on the same thought I don't think we should tie the HERF money to the to the payment of the bond. I think, as, as has been mentioned, we should keep that for uh, the maintenance of our existing roads, which we will always have maintenance on our existing streets. And um, and the second reason I don't think we should tie the HERF money to it is right now, as shaky as the state finances are, we don't know for sure if we're going to get a portion of or any of next year. So I think that's a bit of a, a problem. So I, I'm going to be very positive in saying we need to send this to the, to the people of Fountain Hills and let them make the decision, and I'm going to uh, stand strong on the general obligation bond. Appreciate it. Council Member Contino. Yes, I, I also am kind of torn between doing it and not doing it. I ride Saguaro about six to eight, maybe ten times a day. I'm probably closer to the road than anybody else in my scooter. Do I hit the, the uh, chuck holes or hit the pots that are in there? Yes. But I'll tell you what, it's uh, something that I have set back and I've had many, many people talk to me in the last time since we had the meeting about why are we paying more taxes? Why are we going to do this? I can't afford to pay what I got for now and my husband just got laid off work. So you sit back and you say, should we do it? Should we spend the money? Should we tax the people? Say whether you like it or not, we're going to do it. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's something that sure could go to the voters and could get everything else done. And I think I even said last year that it might be something we look at in November of 10. Um, financially, people are strapped right now. And I'm having them hit me left and right about all the problems we got right now. And I know that we need it. I know it's necessary. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of torn. And I, and I almost second what uh, Councilman, Councilwoman Hansen says, because the Swab Act deal is going to take a, a precedence in it, but I don't know when that's going to happen either. Nobody knows what's going to happen. In this administration, nobody knows from day to day what's going to happen. So why are we going to force ourselves to tax ourselves more? I think we ought to sit back and take a look at that. And I don't want to be the one that sits back and okays it and says, go to the voters, and then voters sit back and say, you did it to me. I don't want that to happen to me. So I'm going to have to turn it down. Council Member Leger, did you want to comment? Let me get Jeff Lee here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I don't think that, my position has not changed since. Um, I articulated my, my point of view at, at our last council meeting. Um, you know, I, I've listened to everyone's argument, my, my peer council members, and, and, and I respect everyone's argument. I think that the project um, has merit. I feel, as I stated in the past, there are just so many moving parts, and um, I, I'm not going to be that fatalistic and think that in the next two years, Sewell Boulevard is just going to crumble beneath us. I think um, two years out, I, we have, uh, I think that can work for us. I think we have a higher probability of success. And 
the the notion that I may be preventing the public from um, making a, a decision, I, I really take exception with that that philosophy to, to begin with. Um, we are elected officials. Uh, uh, I have uh, many constituents. I've spoken to many people. Um, it's Everyone I've talked to says, yeah, man, it'd be great to do it, but the timing is just not there. <clears throat> I've had people say, well, it's temporary. <clears throat> um, a bond for 15 years I don't really consider temporary. Um, I know a lot of people that that's basically um, their, their, their life lifespan. Um, so I, my position is basically, you know, what it was and what I articulated uh, in the past and, um, you know, with respect to taking something away from the voters, I, I don't I don't view it that way. I, I know very few people that wake up in the morning and say, um, "Gee, I want I want to I want to be taxed more money." Um, so that's that's my point of view, and um, I concur with um, um, doing it at some point in time. I just think the timing is is off, and um, I'm now I'm being somewhat redundant here, but. Um, as I stated in the past, there are just too many moving parts. And um, I think we would appreciate the fact that uh, our impact fee analysis that was presented to us earlier this evening, um, certainly those are large increases for, for residential, single, and, and, and multifamily. But I think they're long overdue. Um, and I think that, uh, as you can see, the, the largest increases in our impact fees go to streets because we do have some significant needs, and I think that will take some pressure off us in the future whereby we can either afford to do some work on Saguaro with other capital dollars um, and or go to the electorate in, in, in a couple years when uh, I think there's a higher probability of success. So thank you for allowing me to, to chime in here um, from the great Northwest. Um, those are my thoughts. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Leger, and thank you, all council members. Very good comments, and that's why the last meeting and this one, I've been wanting to listen and and listen to uh, some good thoughts and, and a lot of work that you guys have done in considering this. And of course, I have as well. And I think times are different now um, than they were a year or two ago. And it's not just council members and and staff at the town, municipal, city levels are making decisions based on different criteria, but you look at families and retirees and snowbirds, there's a lot of people making a lot of different decisions these days because of the economy and the realities before us and much of the unknown uh, that's, that doesn't look as rosy as we, uh, it doesn't look as rosy uh, for the next few years. So people are making decisions differently than they have made in the past and particularly around spending dollars and, and this being a public expense. Um, I think there, I haven't heard anybody here that didn't say Saguaro Boulevard needs work. I think we all agree it's more of a timing issue. And um, and I think the the public here, although they, Saguaro Boulevard is in rough shape, particularly some areas, very, very rough shape, um, I think people are going to expect to have rougher roads for a little bit and because monies aren't going to be available to be spent. And this, this instance is one where we're looking to spend um, the public's dollars and their, their paying for the bonds is something that although it be $3 a month for, for each house or whatever it comes to, um, it's still um, a significant spend uh, on the larger picture. And I think it is something, um, after listening to everybody and also listening to the public, I, I can't deny that, and I too ride on Swirl all the time, and, and uh, you literally, and I know Tom could sh give an example of this right now, you can see, you can hear the pavement come up under your tires. It's actually coming off of the ground, coming onto your tires and laying back down, and sometimes it doesn't lay back down when there's water around, and you get some tremendous potholes and such, and, and they will be costly if we don't uh, do the roads uh, next year or, you know, as soon as possible. It'll be more costly to maintain them, so there's a cost either way you go. Um, but I think with the economy um, and also the fact that it, it would go to the ballot, and I don't want to... Um, necessarily put something on the ballot that I don't think has a great chance of, uh, of, of passing uh, because there is a cost to that. Um, and uh, I also consider the fact that the school uh, will have their override on there for uh, the K through 2 or 3. 
uh, as well. And I, we, we need to make sure that uh, the school uh, has uh, a chance to continue with their funding to, to have uh, excelling schools as well. So um, I think at this time I'm, I'm at the place where I'm going to likely move to, um, uh, um, I guess, call for the vote. Uh, do we have a motion here yet? Council Member, or do we have more discussion? Yeah, Council Member Dickey? Just one other thing since we were talking about Swabeck and downtown. Mm -hmm. Just to, it, to me, it's almost a mixed message because we are looking to uh, have this project and we're spending a lot of um, resources and time to create something uh, at least that a lot of people appear to be excited about and think is going to be beautiful and we actually put some money towards it and obviously think it's worthwhile and, and it's a mixed message in my mind then that we would have a crumbling road leading to that that we uh, it was encouraging that we actually wanted to go ahead with Swaback and, and I know a lot of people here were excited about it and it seems to me a mixed message then to have a crumbling road to that and 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 again we're not imposing anything on anybody we're putting it on the ballot I'm not saying I know or think it would pass necessarily, but I think, again, we're not imposing anything. We're, we are putting a question out, and we're seeing what people think about that. If enough people think Saguaro needs to be fixed now rather than later, and actually um, from what we heard, the reports about it, 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 I think it's very realistic that we would spend a lot more money to repair it in a fairly short amount of time than if we went ahead and tried to, to do this now. It seems to me a responsible thing to do uh, to try to put this forward. Um, obviously, you all don't agree with that. I, and, and I just wanted to mention that I was encouraged that we were going ahead with something that looked like we were looking beyond the, the hard times we're having now in, in supporting Swaback and that. And this seems to me we're ignoring the, we're letting something decay, ignoring something that's much more fundamental, um, maybe a little bit out of fear of putting it on the ballot, and, that, and that's just where I stand. And um, obviously, it's not going to go there, but uh, Councilor Dick, I think you're. Uh, it does have some contrast with what we're doing with downtown, but that is also a visioning exercise, and it's not and it's something that's going to be implemented within the next year and it's 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 something that probably uh, if we were able to wait a little bit longer on Saguaro may even make more sense to delay Saguaro to be more in alignment with the vision coming more to reality so um, and to speak to the comments that were made um, uh, in the editorial I believe and someone else mentioned as well as uh, you know building something just to tear it up again I think that's always going to come up I don't think you can really ever stop that from occurring, but if you do see some things coming forward that may impact an improvement that's like that is going to be made, you want to make as much of an adjustment or work around that as you can so that you're not, uh, you know, tearing up what's been placed recently just just to tear it up. But um, in a perfect world, it'd be great to obviously uh, have some sort of a, a, a plan that envelops everything, including the service roads and and swab back and all these things are not going to come into alignment so at some point we're going to have to pull the trigger on this project and bring it before the voters I just think because of the economy and I don't deny it needs to be done here soon uh, I think I'm more in favor of waiting a year or two to bring this before the public and uh, and get us a beautiful new road there in Saguaro. Councilmember Hanson. Thank you Mayor and the the correlation with this swab back thing is it's really more of an opportunity and by waiting just one year it's, it's a very good opportunity to, to maybe roll in something special to happen at that intersection at the avenue in Saguaro and incorporate that into the overall Saguaro plan and, you know, take that more definitive plan to the voters so they see the whole package. So I thought more of it as an opportunity rather than either or. You know, we're going to do this while back and we're going to let Saguaro suffer, and that wasn't it at all. It was really the opportunity to, to coordinate the two. Yeah, I think we're able to wait. I do see many more benefits and utilizing the good things that are coming out of the, uh, the community's visioning for downtown, largely in connection with the connecting downtown and the park. Um, if we're able to delay sewer improvements, at least to that area, longer, it'll probably be in everybody's best interest, depending on how quickly uh, our vision becomes reality for downtown. As it looks now, uh, there's a great deal of focus on at, uh, connecting the park with the avenue. 
and that would include road improvements, narrowing, widening, uh, whatever it may come to. It would be a shame to redo that uh, after swirl has been... Making more better. Making it more Make better. It. Hmm. Making it more better. But thank you for the comments. Council Member Contino? Yes, I think I'd like to sum it up one way when one of the parents that have their children in school sit back and said, we're getting another override crammed down our throat again. We're never told where the money goes, but we got to pay it. And he said, what am I supposed to do? Pay the streets or go ahead and write or go for the override? I got kids in school. So, I mean, we're, we're facing a tough situation, and economics isn't helping us. So I think we have to sit back and take a look at that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to have a motion. Are you looking for the right words to say? Oh, Mayor, I, can, I I've got um, it. No, you've got it. Go for it. Okay. Um, move to approve resolution 2009-24, ordering and calling a special election to be held in and for the town of Fountain Hills, Arizona, on November 3rd, 2009 to submit to the qualified electors thereof the question of authorizing the issuance and sale of $4,500,000 principal amount of general obligation and or street and highway user revenue. Oh, um, can I say that? Oh, like that? Just general obligation. General bonds, obligation right. bonds proj project of 2009 declaring an emergency. I don't, well, that's what it says. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, any further discussion? Is there anyone from the public on this one? No, Mayor. All right, uh, we're going to do roll call here, Beth. Councilmember Hanson? Nay. Councilmember Leger? Nay. Councilmember Dickey? Aye. Councilmember Cantino? Nay. Mayor Schlum? Nay. Councilmember Brown? Aye. Mayor, two to four. Thank you. That motion fails. Thank you for the work staff on that. Keep it in your file. <laughs> <laughs> it's already done now. <laughs> Next item, item is consideration resolution 2009-29 amending and restating the council rules of procedure relating to the selection process for board, commission, committee members. Do we have a presentation here? Uh, Mayor, members of the council, I believe our town attorney, uh, Mr. McGuire, will handle this one. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, as you know, remember from your, your council goals uh, for this year, uh, one of the goals, I believe it was goal 11, was to reduce the number of e-sessions that you had, and particularly uh, by doing so, uh, adopting a method for uh, handling council interviews that didn't require you to do an e-session both to first convene to review the applications to determine how many to interview and then to come back into the interviews. Um, at the time, and, and this is a suggestion we made a, a couple of years ago and, and is now uh, back again to uh, recommend to you that you form a subcommittee that handles the initial stages and the recommendation, uh, both the interviews and the recommendation to the mayor for uh, his appointment. As you know, in, in Fountain Hills, the appointment is a recommendation of the mayor that is approved by the council so that uh, the recommendation would actually be after the interviews to the mayor. The mayor would then bring that forward to the council, and the council would, in a sense, uh, authorize his, his recommendations to be appointed. Um, the, the process in, uh, in Avondale, which is specifically part of the goal here, uh, is, was to have three council members appointed to a subcommittee. It was staffed by the city clerk out there um, and with, with some assistance from the departments, but mostly run by the clerk's office. Now, this process is, is slanted a little more towards the department heads handling more of a hands-on uh, approach to being the ones to make sure that the interviews are established, that all the applications come to you, that you review them, uh, and that your scheduling all goes through that person. I, I would presume you're probably going to have a fairly significant input by the, the town clerk as well in terms of just making sure it all happens in a timely manner to, to hit those set schedules when we have members who are timing out. And that's really where we were getting the, the big bunch up in the interviews was the time when we'd have five committees with losing three spots. Um, this is intended to meet your council goal a few months early. Uh, the uh, council goal is October 1, and 
July 2nd, so I think we're, we're doing well. Good. Thanks Happy for bringing questions. Thanks for bringing this forward. Does anyone have questions to the changes in the, is this the code, our code? Uh, it's changes to the council rules. There are, there are a few housekeeping items that are in there as well. I'd be happy to answer any questions on those, but the only substantive changes are to the section relating to council appointments for boards and commissions and committees. Thank you, Council Member Dickey. Mayor, thanks. Uh, Andrew, I didn't look at this um, close enough to notice that the subcommittee, is that different for whatever the uh, commission is or is it the same subcommittee on a yearly basis, something like that? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilwoman Dickey, we didn't really specify the type of subcommittee. Um, we thought that was best left to the council to determine how you'd want to do that. Uh, Avondale uses a standing committee that's reappointed I believe every two years. Um, some others have used committees that are ad hoc, that you do it for a specific group coming up, that you would appoint three council members to do it on an individual basis, or uh, it could be an annual appointment. It's really up to the council on how you form it. This is just creating the mechanism so that you can form it and do it differently than the whole council meeting to do the interviews. Okay, then um, the mayor, uh, you would come up with the with what you might want to do before the next set of interviews comes up or something like that? Correct. Okay. A uh, question for Andrew, just to clarify on the, uh, the standing subcommittee, um, who could be on the committee? Um, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, any member of the council can be on the committee. Um, you can certainly ask whatever staff you want to be in attendance to assist you, but it's, it's really just three members of the council. And we try to keep it to less than a quorum even though we're going to post this as if it were a regular meeting, this is a, a subcommittee under the open meeting law, subject to all the same constraints. It's just significantly easier to schedule with three people than it is with seven, and a lot easier to try and not have to hit council meeting nights. And so it's, it facilitates the process. And you know, in Avondale, at the time that it was formed, there was a very clear division in the council in terms of philosophies about board and commission appointments. And so at the time, it was a, a selection from one point of view, a selection from another point of view, and a neutral point of view. Um, and uh, the, the committee worked amazingly well as, well, as long as everyone's viewpoints were uh, included. And their council has, has changed significantly over the years, and uh, I haven't yet heard a complaint about it. So I guess the, the appointment to that committee uh, has been fair in, in leaving enough room for uh, what was pretty clearly different point of views and, and that had been expressed previously. So the mayor in that case was pretty clear on, on who had different ideas on what types of people we might want to serve on boards and commission. Okay, Councilmember Hanson. Thank you, Mayor. So, Andrew, then this is written with enough flexibility that the mayor could appoint a different subcommittee for each commission that comes up. So then everybody is still participating. It's just not participating every single time. And also, the burden isn't on everybody for as it is today. Right. <laughs> yes, and, and it's, it, it is flexible in that way, and it, it's also flexible that if you want to have different groups for different time periods, you could, you, know, you could address it by, you know, in this month's work, this is going to be our subcommittee composition. It, it could allow for that. Um, it can allow for interests, as people have more interest in certain mm -hmm. types of committees and commissions. And expertise. And expertise, absolutely. And I think that we, we wanted to leave it open enough so that you all could figure out what works best for you because it's, it's mainly just a mechanism to allow for an easier process so you don't have to meet seemingly endlessly in each session. Yeah, and it's something that we, if it doesn't work, we could change. Yes, absolutely. You can go back to the... The, the current process that the flexibility still it also in allows for that to occur if, if I don't submit a or a form a committee it would just okay. default to the oh. full council that's correct Mayor, any other could I just sorry yes just to follow up um, on page 27 um, it's section e I did this is a very minor thing but it was about um, making copies of the applications and providing it to the subcommittee rather than the town council since the whole council will be voting on the appointment, could we just maybe, if, if, is anybody else interested in changing that to at least the council, all the council would get copies of the application so they'd at least be familiar with the people before it came to a vote? Just a, it's a minor thing. But. I think that's a, uh, that the bottom line is to make sure the council is comfortable in affirming my motion when we come to council meeting. I think that makes sense that it's, it would likely require this. 
you're at least aware of their qualification. Yeah. I think that's a good change. Is that easy to make, Andrew? And subcommittee? Very, very easy to make. Okay. Doesn't require a... I think we're all in favor of that. Okay. We'll, we'll presume that the motion, whenever it's made, includes that. All right. Any other comments or a motion to move on this uh, resolution? Mayor, I move that we approve resolution 2009-29 as presented with the one change on page 27 where the council would receive copies of all of the applications. Good. Do we have a second? Second. Councilmember Leger, did you have anything to add? No, um, I'm ready to, ready to vote. Thank you. <laughs> all right, anyone from the public on this item? No, Mayor. All right, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mayor 6-0. Thank you much. Item 11, consideration resolution 2009-18, levying upon the assessed valuation of the property within Town of Fountain Hill sufficient to raise amounts estimated to be required in the annual budget to provide funds for bond redemptions for the purpose of paying interest-related bond indebtedness, all for the fiscal year ending the 30th day of June 2010. We have a presentation here, Julie. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. Each year the town has an obligation to repay bonds that were issued um, over the past several years, voter approved bonds for um, the library museum and for some open space. And each year that is repaid through an ad valorem or property tax on property owners. So this resolution um, just authorizes the town to authorize Maricopa County to add that tax onto um, property owners. So not a new tax? Uh, Mayor, no, it is not a new tax. We've had this tax for 15 years at least. Thank you. Any uh, one from the public on this? No, Mayor. Any questions for staff? All right, look for a motion on this resolution. 2009-18. So moved. Second. Do we need to read more into it, Andrew, than that? We have a motion on resolution. I read the whole thing when I introduced it. Is that good? Motion on 2009-18. It is. All right. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mayor 6-0. All right. Council discussion direction to the town manager. Deputy town manager tonight. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, one thing that I assumed or gathered from the presentation on the development fees is maybe some clarification to the council on some of those projects that cause the development, the proposed fees to either go up or go down significantly. So within the next two weeks, I'll prepare a presentation to the council that isn't the full capital improvement plan, but just sort of highlights those items that went up or down for clarification for the council. Excellent. Good. All right. That covers item 13 as well as 12. Item 14, look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Do we have anyone from the public on this item? Beth? No, Mayor. All right. All in favor for adjourn, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank God. Happy 4th of July. We do not have another meeting in July. We will see you in August.